So in this video, we want to use random number function to help us add random decimals. So let's call this adding to decimals. And the prompt will just be the decimals that we're trying to add. Let's have our variable a be one decimal. Now when you do the um, random number generator, it picks numbers between, let's say, 1 and 100, but it picks whole numbers. So one way you can turn this into a decimal is then divide that by 10. Right? You can divide it by different amounts to turn it into a decimal of the form that you want. And then for the next variable, let's pick another random number. Let's have it be between um, 101 and 200. And let's also divide that by 10. And now when we have a variable C, we'll call that A plus B. And then the prompt will just be to add up these two variables. So to get the variable in there, we can do plus a, and then plus the uh, blue plus signs here, sorry, are for adding a variable. This green plus sign is the actual plus sign that will appear in the problem. Let's see how that looks. Plus B, we'll see how it looks in a moment, sorry. And let's see how this looks so far. So there's our two decimals right there, but we want to have them appear in LaTeX. So we're going to put this here. I think this will work. Let's try that out. Yeah, it looks better. 2 plus 16. Now here, <laughs> I sometimes have decimals and sometimes we'll have whole numbers here based on the randomness of the numbers, but I can divide by different amounts to fix that. Now, the answer itself, we want it to be equal to C. But sometimes with decimals and fractions, it's important to know how Delta Math is interpreting these solutions to anticipate what students will uh, answer and see if it's correct. So to do that, I'm going to type in add line, and add line will show me what the students would see if they were checking their solution. So it'll also show me what Delta Math thinks is the solution to the problem. It'll give me a sense of what kind of answer is being accepted. So here, uh, the add line will be, we're trying to add in the variable C, essentially. That's our answer. So let's do that. We'll do C, so quotation mark plus... C plus, boom. Let's see how that looks. Now if we go to show solution, we can see what they would see. Let's go into problem, see how they look. Now here, this is um, an interesting example of something I wanted to come up. Um, this is more than just a rounding issue right here. So clearly 18.2 plus 1.4 is 19.6, but Delta Math thinks this is the answer right here. Now, there's lots of discussion of this in the documentation on Delta Math and how to deal with it. And I think the easiest way, aside from rounding, right, you could do, let's see what happens here, round A plus B to two decimal places. All right, we could round it. I'm going to program, let's see what happens here. All right. So you can see there are no real issues here. Um, but if we take that off, it's still kind of that lurking issue, right? Which is what just happened? Why is it why is it that that thing just happened that we saw like this? You know, clearly this is 21, uh, excuse me, this is 21.1, but it's a delta math is interpreting it this way. And I believe it's a JavaScript issue. So they've resolved that if you type in the command number. And number, if you read through the details right here, will help you with situations like this. See, in JavaScript, 0.1 plus 0.2 is 3.0000004. Clearly, that's an issue, right? So by setting the variable C equal to the number, type in number, A plus B, let's see if that resolves the issue here. Let's click through them. And you can see that we've now eliminated that issue. So when you're working with decimals or fractions, when you define certain variables based on the sum of decimals, or difference or product, you want to include that number prefix in the front to eliminate any kind of weird JavaScript rounding issues. All right, thanks.